Hello, greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Cal Preach, you guys. Okay, listen, who is the Lord of your human empire? Who's the Lord of my human empire? I have to ask myself that right now. It better be Jesus. It better be Jesus. It better not be food. It better not be anything other than Jesus. Okay, so I've been thinking about this and I've been thinking about my wedding day the day that I married Bill and the day that I realized that my life was no longer like my own, that I was now one flesh. And it was intense for me. I had a little bit of a nervous breakdown a couple of days before I married Billy. Like if I'm being honest, I was terrified of getting married and he's a great guy and everything, but I was super, super terrified, but um, <clears throat> I realized that, um, you know, the Bible talks about the bride and the Bible talks about like, you know, being, um, being white as snow and being pure for the Lord and that when we die, it's actually like our wedding day, which is just so powerful to me. And um, I don't know, I was thinking about how Sometimes I dethrone God and I crown myself and I just want to really remind myself today that the Lord of my human empire is Jesus. And I dethrone China and I put the crown on Jesus. Put the crown on Jesus because that's who deserves the crown. And... um He's the great I am. He's the great I am. What does that mean? That means that he existed before time began, that he has always been. He is the great I am. When they asked God to describe who he was, he said, just tell them that I am sent you. I am. That's powerful. I am. So um, I'm really glad I didn't wake up dead today. Um <laughs> because um, I'm trying to work on gratitude and I, I suffer. I suffer from a lack of gratitude and, you know, I have no reason to have a lack of gratitude because I have an amazing life. And um, yes, I've got trials and yes, I've got some stuff which I can't really discuss at this very moment what's going on in my life, but it's intense and there's some things that I'm going to be facing in December that... Whew, I'm going to need a lot of prayer for, but I'm going to face it and my family's going to face it and we're going to get through it. And um, I didn't wake up dead. I didn't wake up dead. I'm alive. I am well and life is good. And, um, you know, I'm just, pra I need to practice gratitude. You guys, I don't have enough gratitude. Oh. And then, and then I forget to be grateful. It's like then I think to myself, oh my gosh, I went this whole day and I didn't practice gratitude. It's like a, for some reason, that's just not my natural place to go is to be full of gratitude. I mean, I know that there are people who wake up and say, thank you, God, thank you. And somebody said in the comments, when you wake up, look up to the sky and say, I love you too. I love you too. How powerful is that? Because God loves us, you know? So I love you too. Um, and then somebody said, God, help me see myself as you see me. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I could see myself the way God sees me, I think I would have a very different perspective on who China is. So, um, yeah, that's a good prayer. God, help me see myself as you see me, you know? Because um, we really do have an exaggerated little holy note here. We have an exaggerated view of ourselves and of our own righteousness, and we have a very diminished and inadequate view of God in his perfection. Now, that might sound like I'm kind of speaking out of both sides of my mouth, but I'm actually not. Because God sees us as glorious and perfect and without blemish because of what his son did for us, what Jesus did for us. 
But we, as human beings, have an exaggerated view of ourselves and our own righteousness, and we have a very diminished and inadequate view of God in his perfection. So, you know, when you ask most people, like, do you think you're a good person? Most people are going to say, yeah, I think I'm a really good person, you know? I do my best, and I think I'm, I think I'm a pretty good person. Um, but we have an exaggerated view of that, and the truth is, is that... Um, if we were such great people, why would we need a savior? If we were such amazing people, why would we need God to come down off of his th heavenly, you know, throne and come down to this world, into this world and die and suffer and rise again for us? Clearly there is something damaged with us. So, um, yeah. That's, that's really important to keep in mind, that exaggerated view of our righteousness, which, uh, you know, I could talk about that forever. Um, so Jesus is a holy hound. <laughs> if he hasn't gotten a hold of you yet, beware. Because once he gets a hold of you, honey, he chases after you and he is persistent and he is not going to stop hounding after you. He's going to sniff you out. He's going to get you. You better hope he does. But just know that once he does, you guys, it's game over. Because all you can do is think about Jesus. And all you want to do is serve Jesus. And all you want to do is be in love with Jesus. And all you want to do is scatter seed. And all you want to do is scream his name from the rooftops. And to, to know that he is the son of God. He is the Christ. And that he's entered and taken residence inside your palace, you know. Once that happens, that's it. You dethrone yourself and you crown God. Um, because there's just no other way. Um, so imagine dying without Jesus. I mean, talk about doomed. Nobody wants to die without Jesus, okay, you guys? You don't want to die without Jesus. So if you're watching California preaching and, you know, your life has not been dedicated to the Lord, you know, just keep in mind that, um, that the Bible doesn't lie, you guys. The Bible's telling the truth. There is a heaven and there is a hell. You don't want to die without Jesus. You do not. Um, so... Okay, so I did that holy note. Okay. Um, okay, so we're not going to major on the minor today. You know, there's so many things that I could do to major on the minor. And that would be, you know, worrying about whatever. <sighs> you know, worrying about finances. Worrying about my car and the fact that my, you know, tires need air. Worrying about the fact that... Um, you know, we have some um, issues going on in the family that are, uh, you know, they could see major. They could. They could. They could. But in the scope of things, in the real scope of things, it's manageable. So I'm just trying to keep things in perspective and not major on the minor. So I hope that you can take that with you today. And I'm just going to flip the faith switch on because, you know, if I don't flip my faith switch on, guys... How am I going to get through life? How am I going to get through life? You know, it's of course it's easy to just assume that there's a possibility that there is no God, that there is no God watching over us, that there is no God that really cares. But, um, you know, we got to do that spiritual squint. We got to really put our love lenses on. Love lenses on. We got to squint. We got to look. We got to think. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you can't use your brain. We got to use our brain. There is a God that loves us. He gave us promises. There's, there's truth here. You know, this is not a blind faith. So flip, flip that faith switch on today. Have you ever said, guys, have you ever said, Lord Jesus, I need a savior. Have you ever held your hand to your heart and said, Lord Jesus, I need a savior. Lord Jesus, I can't save myself. Lord Jesus, nobody else can save me. Lord Jesus, you are the only savior. Because you are Lord that became a man that died and became ransom for me. 
Can you place your hand on your chest and say, you know, that, that Jesus, you are the blood that shed for me for the forgiveness of, the sin, of my sin? Like, can you put your hand on your heart and say these words? Can you do that? It feels so good, you guys. I'm telling you, if you've never done it, do it. Put your hand on your heart and say those words. And, um, and subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Subscribe. You can do it. There's just a little button there. And you push it. It's a red button that says subscribe. You push it. And then there's a little bell right next to it. So Jesus is still on trial, you guys, okay? So whether you know it or not, Jesus is still on trial. Think of all the judges that he has in this world. Think of all the people who hate Jesus. Think of all the people who are repelled by the name of Jesus. Think of all the people that just don't want anything to do with Jesus. Don't even, you mention Jesus, they walk out of the room. There's so many of them. Jesus is still on trial. Oh, do you, I remember when I was one of the judges. I remember. I remember when I was one of those people that was like, oh gosh, don't mention Jesus. Or I'd open a book that I bought and there'd be scripture in it. I'd be like, what a waste of money. Why did I buy this darn book? It has scripture in it. I'm not that person. I was putting Jesus on trial for years. That was me. That was me. So we have to defend him, guys. We have to defend our Lord. We have to go out there and defend our Lord. He's still on trial. Not funny. I mean, this is serious stuff. We now identify with Jesus as the judged. People look down at us. They laugh at us. They ridicule and they persecute us for our belief. How foolish it seems to those who are perishing. You know, we identify now with that ju that judgment. Yeah. People are judgy. People are judgy when it comes to Jesus. They just are. But is that going to stop us? How cool that we identify with our king. We know what it feels like to be judged. I love that. Um, do you remember the day that your blindness was healed? Go back. Think about it. Do you remember the day that your blindness was healed? Do you remember the day that you could see? I was blind, but now I see. So the definition of ransom is to obtain the release of a prisoner by making a payment demanded. Guys, we were prisoners. We were prisoners that were set free by his ransom. Somebody paid your ransom. There's no other savior than Jesus. There's nobody else who has his qualifications, you guys. He has the, co the qualifications to save your life and read the Bible because God is the author of that book. He is the author of that book. God is the author of that book. And I'm trying to read the Old Testament. Lord, forgive me. The Old Testament, there is a lot of, you know, dog hom beget wog hom and wog hom beget dog lum and log them beget sog dum. And I can't, it's really hard for me. But I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I want to understand the Bible. I want to understand the Bible. Okay, we're wrapping it up. Um, ask Jesus to bring you back to God. He's competent and he can do it. Ask Jesus to bring you back to God. He's the great mediator. Jesus Christ is the mediator. He can bring you back. Ask him for the help. He can do it. And whatever trial you're going through, remember that you will turn, he, he's going to turn that test into a testimony one day. You're going to have a story. Whatever you're going through right now, you're going to have a story. You know, when my sister had, you know, the, the book that came out about, you know, everything that went on with my father. When Vance got diagnosed with cancer. When I almost divorced Billy. When, you know, uh... Oh, I don't know. Everybody has their story. But you know what? It turns into a testimony. It's not just a sad story. It's a story that can help people. And to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Don't fear death. I'm really trying, you guys. I'm really trying with that one. 
I've got it. I should have this plastered on my forehead. Okay, paper cut. I should have this plastered on my forehead. To be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Amen, amen, amen. So let's conquer the world with the peace of Christ today, you guys. And remember that religion says do and Jesus says done. It's done. There's nothing. This is the best deal ever. <laughs> There's nothing we have to do. All we have to do is love him with all of our heart and all of our soul. That's it. And we get eternal life. We get forgiveness of our sins. You know, it's like religion. I know it's confusing. People say to me, you're religious. I'm not. I say, I'm not religious. Jesus despised religion. He came to tear it down. He wants us to read the word and go into the closet and pray. That's what he wants. Relationship. And I'm just going to close in prayer. Um, Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. I thank you, Father God, for opening our eyes. I thank you, Father God, for giving us just a hope today, a living, living hope, Father. I thank you, Jesus, that you are just going to, you turn our day back to the cross, whatever it is that we're doing right now, however it is that we're feeling, however hopeless we're feeling, however confused we're feeling, however, whichever grief or pain we're in, Father, that we will do a screeching you turn back to the cross right now, Father. I thank you, Jesus, that you will give us an attitude of gratitude, that you will show us how to smile today, no matter what our circumstances are, because just a gentle smile is a powerful worship, Jesus. Show us how to just have a gentle smile, Lord, but that it would be authentic, that it would come from a real place, Lord. We thank you, Father, for that. We thank you, Jesus, for that. Lord, I, I just ask you, Father, to give us all a, a fresh a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit, that you would just cleanse us right now and that all evil spirits would just flee from us in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would just hold us in your bountiful, beautiful love that just lavish us with your abundance and your prosperity and your goodness and that we would have the fruit of the Spirit hanging fruit, low hanging fruit, Lord Jesus, that you would give us peace, love, joy, patience, self-control, faithfulness. I'm missing one. <laughs> thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. Help us to not be blind today. Take the scales off our eyes. Let us smile with gratitude and tell those th that we love how much we love them, Father. Untangle our tongues. Help us to speak it out today, the love that we have for them, and to be able to pray today in your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Peace of Christ. Bye.